Hey guys, this is Michael from Clutter Stuff, and uh, I wanted to review this movie here, uh, Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films. Uh, it's a documentary, um, and it is great. The documentary is intentionally hilarious at some times, and the story that they that it tells is kind of unintentionally hilarious at other times. Um, Canon Films was uh, basically the brainchild of Joram Globus and Menachem Gollum. And they are, were two uh, Israeli movie makers uh, who made movies in, in Tel Aviv in the uh, 70s and decided they wanted to come to Hollywood and make <coughs> some Hollywood movies and uh, be big stars. So. They actually started by uh, purchasing uh, Canon Films, which was pre-existing. They made uh, movies, that, bad movies during the 70s. Uh, movies that I could only describe in, in some cases as um, uh, softcore <laughs> uh, foreign films um, brought to Hollywood, so, you know, remakes and, and that sort of thing, or overdubbed uh, or versions of the original in some cases, I, I believe. Um, but uh, Globus and Gollum had no idea how to make a good movie. So one of the first movies they made was a movie called The Apple. And it was, uh, in I believe, 79 or, or 1980. And um, it it became uh, it's it's pretty much one of the worst ideas for a movie and just really poor execution. It is a rock opera um, that tells a kind of sci-fi futuristic version of the story of the Garden of Eden. <coughs> uh, they went on to, one of the next movies they made was actually an American-based remake, almost shot-for-shot shot remake, of a highly successful movie that they made in Israel called, um, if I'm remembering the name correctly, Lemon Popsicle. Uh, and it was extremely successful and had, a, had several sequels in Israel, uh, which I can only describe as being kind of a uh, 70s version of a kind of a teenage sex movie like uh, Porky's or American Pie. Um, well, they remade that in, in the United States with American actors, and it was called uh, The Last American Virgin. And that movie is, without a doubt, I actually um, have known about that movie for several years, uh, probably 10, 15 years uh, since the first time I saw it. And it was just, I mean, it's one of those movies that is, it's, a, it's supposed to be a comedy with little elements of drama. But the elements of drama, in most cases, are actually funnier than the intentional comedy. And it's such a bad movie. It is one of those movies that is just so bad that it's good. Um, just to give you an example of some craziness that, that takes place in uh, The Last American Virgin, uh, at one point... Uh, one of the characters gets an abortion. And this other character, this guy who has a crush on her, uh, took her to the clinic. And when he comes to pick her up, he brings her a, a couple of gifts, uh, which were uh, basically a mini Christmas tree and a bag of oranges. I have no idea. I, I, I guess, you know, like... Um, I think, was it paper is the first anniversary of the traditional gift? I guess the traditional gift for abortions is many Christmas trees and a bag of oranges. So I, I don't know what that, I don't know what that's all about, but that's just a perfect example of how, just how bad, uh, the last American virgin is. Um, they went on to make mostly bad movies. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, few good ones. Um, but among some of the movies that they made, as you can see here, 
Uh, they basically gave Chuck Norris his American film career. Um, they discovered Jean-Claude Van Damme. So some, most of his early movies were uh, canon films, um, which I enjoyed, actually. I remember loving the, the old Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, movies. Excuse me, like uh, Bloodsport and Cyborg and Lionheart and uh, some of those. Those were all canon films uh, productions. But among some of the bad ones uh, were... Uh, oh, they also did all of the Death Wish sequels. Not the original Death Wish with Charles Bronson, but Death Wish 2 and Death Wish 3. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sneezing. Uh, they did the god-awful Masters of the Universe movie. They did the one uh, Sylvester Stallone movie that is probably universally reviled uh, over the top, which was basically a movie about truck drivers arm wrestling. I, it's weird, I don't know. Um, we're supposed to somehow feel for this this arm wrestling competition and care who wins. <laughs> Especially considering that he kind of wins by cheating. I, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really get that uh, at all. Um, they did do uh, Breaking, uh, the movie Breaking, which, uh, if you're a fan of hip hop, was what was probably one of the first and is kind of universally acknowledged at, at bringing the knowledge of hip hop culture uh, to the mainstream. Um, and was not a bad movie at all. Uh, they also did the sequel, Break Into Electric Boogaloo, which is what this documentary um, is named after, which is almost universally considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. Uh, they did King Solomon's Minds and the um, sequel, uh, Alan Quartermain's something or other, uh, which are both kind of cheesy rip-offs of Indiana Jones, not good, uh, it, it does mark the, one of the first appearances of Sharon Stone, um, they did Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, which again is just god-awful, you know, basically if you compare Superman 4, you know, the special effects, for example, of Superman 4 to Superman, uh, 1, 2, and 3, uh, it's ridiculous. Um, they did the American Ninja movies. They did, I mean, basically, they are almost single-handedly responsible for the Expendables, which, which on called Van Damme and Chuck Norris and Charles, uh, no, Charles Robinson and the uh, Expendables. But um, Sylvester Stallone was, you know, uh, although he, he, his appearance in the uh, Expendables is more due to um, his good movies, not you know, Rambo and, and such, not uh, over the top, but still. Uh, Dolph Lundgren in The Expendables, you know, appears in a canon film as far as Masters of the Universe. Um, I'm trying to think of what other movies they did. I mean, uh, they're basically, uh, the way that they would produce movies is extremely small budgets, and what they would do is Instead of, you know, the traditional way of finding a script they like, finding actors, um, and then, you know, creating a movie and starting to promote it, what they would do is they would make a poster for some movie idea. Like, just a poster. No script in hand. No, um, you know, they would attach an actor to it. Someone like a Chuck Norris or, a, you know. And they would pre-sell the movie to uh, foreign markets. And they would take the money that they got from those foreign markets and they would use that money to make the movie. Uh, so <laughs> they kind of did it the back. You know, they, and, and that's how they could tell what movies to make was they would pre-sell these posters, basically, uh, that, rep that represented these, you know, movies that didn't actually exist. 
and whichever movies were popular enough and the foreign markets would buy them, those are the movies that they would actually make. Um, they did, uh, later in their career, they started spending a bit of money, um, and that's where you see, like, Masters of the Universe come in, Superman 4 come in, uh, but it was more money than they were used to spending, but still not nearly enough money to make them good movies. Um, and eventually they uh, had to sell Canon Films. Um, they went bankrupt and had to sell all Canon Films. Someone else uh, picked them up uh, and continued the tradition of making bad movies, but did it well. And, and most of them at that point were talking late um, 80s, early 90s. And uh, a lot of the movies were straight-to-video type movies, you know, these kind of generic action films that Canon was famous for. So, um, this documentary is hilarious. I, like I said, I mean, it is it is just so much fun, you know, and it's, and it's a different subject matter, you know, talking about the making of bad, bad movies. Um, so, I, I love it. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite uh, documentaries recently. I actually found this just kind of browsing at Walmart, and I saw the front cover, and it hooked me immediately. I mean, I saw I saw Chuck, uh, Chuck Norris, I saw Sylvester Stallone, I saw Jean Claude Van Damme, I saw Master of the Universe. I picked it up and read the back of it, and it was like, you know, it was nine ninety nine, I think. Uh, so I I. I just said, oh, I have to get this, this is, you know. So anyway, great movie, uh, I mean, great documentary, hilarious, uh, and, it, and it's such a unique subject matter um, that, you know, it was really, uh, it, it, it's really just an interesting take on an interesting subject. So anyway, uh, I definitely recommend it. Um, I have... Uh, if you if you want to pick up the DVD, if you're old school like me, you can you can pick up the DVD at Walmart. Um, I believe it's also actually available on Netflix currently, so uh, you can also try to find it on there if you have Netflix. Um, uh, great great movie. So um, the title again is Electric Boogaloo: The Wild Untold Story of Canon Films. So thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you later. Bye.